Viognier is one of my favorite varietals. I love the way that it has a light peach honeysuckle flavor, this beautiful floral quality about it. And one of the things I love to make with a Viognier is something that's like an Indian food, like a curry. It goes well with seafood, with chicken, but right now I'm gonna make a cauliflower curry. So for those of you who really want those wonderful vegetarian recipes, this one's for you. So I'm gonna start with a nice hot pan and I've put in about a tablespoon to tablespoon and a half of olive oil. Now the first thing I want to do is to saute some aromatics. You know, anytime you have aromatics, they're going to add to the beauty of the recipe. So I have one medium red onion. Let's add to that a little bit of chopped garlic. Now be careful that garlic doesn't burn because if you have any of your aromatics that are burning, then you end up with a really bad flavor. A Little bit of chopped ginger. Now I love fresh ginger root and anytime you're doing a curry or an Asian recipe, you really wanna use nice fresh ginger if you can. So let's give that a stir. It smells heavenly. I love this combination of flavors. You know, people can talk about mirepoix all they want, but this combination in the Indian cuisine, I just love. That beautiful garlic, onion, and ginger. Mm. Now I'm gonna add to that two large sweet potatoes that I've just chunked into about half inch cubes. We want them to cook rather quickly, so, make them a little bit smaller. I want to saute this about five minutes. And while I do that, I'm gonna chunk up one medium cauliflower. And we just want to make this florets. Now the great thing is that by the time this cauliflower reaches your bowl as a finished product, it's going to be nice and soft. So you'll be able to cut it into smaller pieces with your spoon. So don't worry if some of the pieces are a little chunkier, but try to make them as uniform as possible so that the cauliflower cooks the same time. Now while the sweet potato is still softening in the pan, I want to add some wonderful seasonings. So I have some turmeric. That will give amazing color and depth of flavor. I have coriander, cumin, and some curry. Lots of seeds. Now I wanna bloom these in the pan. That means that those seasonings are hitting the bottom of the pan. That heat releases a wonderful intense flavor and it's just beautiful. Okay, those seasonings are all toasted and the sweet potato is still hard, but it's starting to cook. So what I wanna do now is add my cauliflower. Now I want to start adding some liquid. As soon as I start to get seasoning all over my cauliflower, I know it's hitting the heat of the pan, then I want to add those liquids. So the first thing I'm gonna add is a can of fire roasted tomatoes. Now you can use a regular diced tomato, that's fine, but I like the fire roasted in this. It's going to give a little more flavor and I'm all about building those flavor layers in all of these recipes. So if you want, you can use regular diced tomatoes and you can use fresh if you'd like. But those fire roasted, mm, they're just delicious. So just a little liquid in that and that liquid will go to the bottom of the pan and will allow those spices that are now on the bottom of the pan that have cooked to come up into my beautiful uh, curry. Now I'll add a can of chickpeas, garbanzo beans. I've drained these, but I did not rinse them. So you want a little bit of that starch that's on the bottom of the pan. That just adds texture. And I'm just gonna use one of my bowls this one is about 12 ounces or so. And I'm going to put in 12 ounces to 16 ounces, so two cups of water. I'm gonna let this cook in this wonderful stock that we've made with the water, the tomato juice, and our beautiful seasonings for about 10 minutes. Then I'll be back to add some cilantro and some delicious coconut milk and a hint 
of lime juice. So look at this incredible pot filled with all of our wonderful vegetables. The cauliflower has just gotten soft enough, as have the sweet potatoes. So the next thing I'm gonna do is add one can of coconut milk. And as with most curries, you should use a full fat coconut milk. Oh, smells so heavenly. And then I want to add a little cilantro. This will make a nice pop of green in the pan and it gives it a really wonderful flavor. Now the last thing I want to do is to just squeeze in some fresh lime juice. And remember limes don't have seeds, so they're easy to squeeze right into the pan. Soften that lime a little bit before you try to squeeze it. And I need about a tablespoon. That should be one half of a lime. When you taste it without the lime, you know it needs acidity. So what I have in my bowl is a beautiful jasmine rice. I think the jasmine rice really goes well with this flavor of curry. And it brings out a couple of the nutty hints in this viognier. Oh, beautiful. And it just smells so great. Now we want to garnish this with a little bit of lime wedge and some extra cilantro on the top. Okay, so let's pour this viognier. It is so beautiful. Viognier tends to be a lemon to gold color depending on if it's grown in a warm or cool climate. It's so gorgeous. Mm. When I smell this, I actually get a little hint of that coconut. I get peach, floral, mm, it's just wonderful. Mm, so delicious. Mm.